Welcome everyone to my set of notes on the force of friction. I really love talking about friction and I think as we take these notes and we do the lab in class and we have further discussions, you really understand why I think it's one of the, the best topics ever. So much of what we do in life completely depends on friction. So let's put a little title up here and we're just going to call this the force of friction. Now, as we do so often, let's start with just a definition. Let's, let's go up right here to the top and we'll say friction. Let me make sure my eye shows up there. Friction. And let's say friction is a force that opposes motion. And I think we all can believe that, right? You roll a bowling ball uh, not very hard down the floor and eventually that bowling ball or anything will stop moving and that's due to friction. So, a force that opposes motion between two surfaces. Two surfaces that are in contact. That are in contact. We've all had the experience maybe being out on the football field or the soccer field and you kick a ball and the soccer ball maybe flies, it lands on the grass, but it doesn't keep going forever. Eventually it rolls and stops and that's due to friction. All right, so <clears throat> when we talk about friction and it's a force, we got to talk about sort of what decides how strong that force of friction is. So let's write down here the strength A force of friction. And I think as we write these two things down, you won't be very surprised, and I'm going to be very happy for that. One, what determines how much friction there is between two objects that are in contact is how hard, how hard the surfaces push together. How hard the surfaces push together. And, you know, just think about this. If you have your hands and you put them in front of you, right, and you barely, just softly, barely touching and you do like this, it's really easy to move your hands back and forth. But all of a sudden, if you push hard and you try to do it, there's so much friction, you can't move them. Or if you move them, it gets really hot really quickly. So how hard the surfaces push together. And the second thing that determines how the, the force of friction is the types of surfaces involved. The types of surfaces involved. And I think if you think about this second one, vol, there we go, that you would say, hey, yeah, you know what? There's probably more friction between my hand and a sheet of sandpaper than there is between my hand and a smooth piece of glass. And so the amount of friction between two objects depends on how hard they're pushed together and what kind of surface that we're talking about. And somewhere here in the next few days, I'll show you a, a very brief PowerPoint presentation with some very cool images uh, looking at different surfaces up close. So let's type, but we got, now we gotta move on and talk about the types of friction. There are actually different types. So let's write that down, types of friction. And this is where I really, I just love this. All right, first kind, right here. Let's just go right there, a little bullet point, and let's say static friction, static friction. And static friction is awesome. This is why we can walk. Static friction, friction between, friction between stationary objects. So when you're standing up, just standing still, there's friction between the bottom of your shoe and the floor. That's static friction. And when you try to push off to take a step, it is static friction that keeps you from sliding all over the place. Static friction. The friction between two objects that are not moving. So an example 
would be between a book and a table. So if you're sitting at a school table and there's a book sitting there, there's static friction between that table and that book. Next kind of friction. This one's fun. This is kinetic friction. Kinetic. Kinetic means moving or motion. So this is the different kinds of friction between moving objects. Kinetic friction. Friction between moving objects. Moving objects. And we're going to talk about three different kinds of kinetic friction. First of all is sliding friction. Sliding friction. And just like it sounds, this is uh, when objects slide past each other. When objects slide past each other. And so a good example of that, and one of my favorites, is kid going down a slide. Kid going down a slide. So there's sliding friction. You're sitting on your uh, behind, and as you slide down that metal or plastic slide, the material in your uh, pants is sliding against the material of the slide. Sliding friction. Next one. This one is rolling friction. Rolling. And you know this is one of Mr. Collier's favorite, rolling friction. I think about rolling friction all the time when I'm thinking about mountain bikes and mountain bike tires and mountain bike tire inflation. Think about it a lot. So rolling friction is when a round object rolls over a flat surface. Now, that's very specific over a flat surface. And we'll just leave it that way. But just so you know, it doesn't mean like, you know, a, a ball rolling over another ball. So flat can be a little bit relative, right? So this would be like a uh, bike tire on ground, right? Or skateboard rolling over something. And the next one is fluid friction. And we've all had this example. We've lived this every single day. Fluid friction, it occurs when an object moves through fluid. Now you're thinking, hmm, Mr. Collier doesn't seem so familiar or common, but let's remind ourselves that fluid can equal liquid, like water, or air. So when we talk about fluid friction, Oops, let me go that up there. When we talk about fluid friction, uh, we mean things like um, when you walk around, there's fluid friction between you and the air that you're walking through. Or if you're trying to like swim through a pool, uh, there's fluid friction between you and the water. So let's do a quick example of fluid friction. Um, if you've ever shot, played with a Nerf ball, um, fluid friction slows down a Nerf ball or a person gliding in a pool. And I said Nerf ball, I probably meant wiffle ball. But you know, I used to always as a kid and even as an adult, I would dive off of the side of the pool and, you know, see how far I could glide through the water without kicking or stroking. And that was always a good example of fluid friction that would slow me down. Now, this is really important, and this is a great question for quizzes and final exams. And that is, you know, which of these frictions is sort of stronger, all right? So we're going to put one here in the middle of the page called force. And this is the last thing we're going to do on this page, force of friction. 
force of friction, okay? And on this line, we're gonna say down here is bigger, and down here, the force of friction on our examples is gonna be smaller. All right, and then let's put it in here. So, on this one, uh, that's really big is um, sliding friction, sliding friction, and that's bigger than the thing in the middle, which is rolling friction, and both of those are bigger than fluid friction. And so the way to remember this is, have you ever had the experience of being in your, helping your parents or someone clean out a garage and they say, hey, go move that box. And you try to push that box and get it to move, man, that's pretty tough. But then someone might say, hey, I have a moving dolly and we can set this box up on this dolly and it's really easy to move across the floor. And so we know that sliding friction is, the force of sliding friction is greater than the force of rolling friction. And easier than all of those is fluid friction. It's way easier to move something through a fluid. In the old days, they used to move cargo and logs using lakes and rivers because it was so much easier to move them through water than it was to roll them or slide them across the ground. Now, even more, uh, uh, or I shouldn't say even more, but stronger than all three of these is static friction, static friction. And static friction, again, is the thing, the force between two objects that are not in motion. So think about that. Have you ever had the experience of trying to move a box, like on the floor, and you're, you're pushing and pushing to get it to move, and finally it moves, and once it starts moving, it seems like it's even easier to push, and that's, that's why, because it's harder to get it moving, the two objects that are not in motion, the box and the floor, and once you overcome static friction with enough force, it becomes sliding friction, and that's easier to overcome. And then if you could roll it, that would be even easier. So I hope these notes will help from what you experienced in your lab and what we talk about in class. Thank you very much for listening.